There are lots of ways to do a skin check. Whichever way you choose, it should be thorough, it should be repeatable, and should be flexible because some patients sort of tie your hand behind your back somewhat with their requirements for modesty. Some don't, some do. Thanks for filling out the floor manner. Um, 1979 baby, operations manager, sort of indoorsy job. The rest of the form looks pretty standard. And you're here for a mole check, of course you are. Oh, and you've ticked the, I've had some sunburns in my time. Um, importantly also, have you ever had a full skin check before? Yes. You have? How long ago was that, Anna? 12 months. 12 months since last check. Did they find anything that was either good, bad or indifferent? No. Alright. So, got any questions before we get cracking? Alrighty, well give me a yell once you're over there and we'll get to work. Because five of my patients have had scalp melanomas underneath their hair, and maybe one in every five to 10,000 scalps that I check has a melanoma that the patient doesn't know about, I feel that I should look through scalps. Um, probably means I will find less total melanomas in my career, because I'll just be wasting two minutes a patient on most of my patients by looking through their scalp. But if what's important isn't how many you find, but how many you miss, then hopefully I will miss less than I otherwise would have. So I try to find a part line. I rifle through the right half of the part, then the left half of the part. Sort of, you know, just looking at white scalp most of the time, flicking the hair out of the way. Then I run behind the patient and try and get them to fling their hair over the fringe and just rifle through there and there and there, looking at the back of the right ear, back of the left ear, and lifting the hair up to look at the back of the neck. Then that might take two and a half minutes, depending on you know, how much hair the person's got. I wear two and a half times visor magnification, so I can only see about a hand's breadth of actual skin at any one time, but I just feel that without magnification, I might miss some early subtle carcinomas or that sort of inflammatory, is it an early superficial BCC? So, I wear the visors and I can check the top third, then the middle third, then the lower third of the face. And I explain to the patients as I'm doing it that there's a reason I'm touching your temples and sort of feeling your forehead and running my hand over your nose. It's because sometimes you feel these precancerous things, like solar keratoses, before you actually see them. Open your eyes and look upwards for a moment. Yeah, this is all pretty good skin. A bit of freckling. You know, why wouldn't you have a bit of freckling? Um, that's pretty good to there. Let me have a bit of a look at sort of the mid third of your face. Some people get these rough bits on their noses because they've just had so much sun over, you know, four decades. You don't really have that. So you've got away with it or you've got good genes or good management or something. That's a normal mole. And I'm trying to educate the patient as I'm looking for skin cancers. So hopefully they're picking up some of the things that I'm looking for. I say, look, by the way, I'm looking for you know, pink things that have been in the same place for maybe six weeks and haven't gone away. I'm looking for scaly things that haven't stopped being sandpapery in a couple of months. Um, and you know, by the end of a couple of minutes, I've finished checking the face. And the face is a really common place to get skin cancer because we get lots of sun on it. Then it's down to the neck as much as you can. So, you know, you've got these little freckles on your neck. Nothing there is particularly scary. I'll have a little look around the front of your neck. Just turn your head a little bit for me. Yeah, lots of normal looking moles that wouldn't hurt a fly. A couple that stand out. Don't worry about this little one here. This is the same as the thing on your forehead that we saw, a little red spot. Um, you've got freckling all over there. A couple of moles just having a quick look at, very normal. Yeah, even that one's really normal. So that's all pretty good. You know, your, head's, your head and your neck are as they should be. Um, let's have a look at your arm. Would you put your right arm out in front of you for a second? We'll have a look at that. Thanks. Check the fingernails and make a point of actually touching the fingernails so that the patient remembers that you've checked their fingernails because if you don't make a, a big deal of it, the patient's gonna wonder if you checked it. Because if you just sort of 
silently eyeball them, they might not feel like they've had a skin check. And an element of what we do is peace of mind in the worried well, I suppose. So you check the hands, both sides. I sort of check the forearm and then say, please bend your elbow, raise your arm up, check the next half of the arm and check the shoulder. Then I say, change hands, left hand, spread your fingers, check that half, that bit, then the forearm, then the dorsum, then upper arm, arm up, check the armpits. Look, your forearm's in quite nice nick. You've got a bit of background freckling, the occasional mole probably worth having a quick glance at, but really, a little burn or something from the past. Then you're done, you know, well done, I say. Your head, your neck and your arms, no skin cancers there. Look, most skin cancers are probably in sun exposed areas and you don't seem to have any. Let me just check the rest. So, then it's, could you please lie on your back? And if it's men, you just sort of check the chest, the tummy, move the undies around a bit to make sure I don't miss anything hiding on a hip. Normal, normal. Again, you have a little bit of color in some of your moles, don't you? Not, not stacks, but just enough to sort of keep it interesting. And I sort of understand why you've had more than one skin check because some of your moles look a little bit interesting. Not the big one, but the smaller one. Just a bit of extra color in it. Side of the leg, often nothing there. I'll have a look at your leg properly in a second. Normal moles is all I'm seeing so far. Nothing hiding there, and the other leg. And then check the thighs while the patient's lying on their back. You sort of rock their legs a bit side to side till you get to the ankle on both sides. With women, what I do is I say, usually when I'm looking at their thighs or their shins, I mention, oh, is there anything on your chest that you think I should be aware of? So they can have a bit of a look and say, nah, there's nothing going on, you know, while I'm busy looking at their toes or something. So then either way, I'm, I'm at the ankles, make a big deal of looking at the feet because you need to have the patients understand that you have actually looked at their toes for melanomas and web space things. Then ask the patient, is there anything on the front of you that you'd like me to look at that I haven't seen yet? No? All right, well, could you turn over on your tummy? All right, let's check your feet for a second. All right, there seems to be not much going on there. Lift their feet up to look at the sole of each foot. Doesn't help you that much, look at the sole of their feet, but then they know that you've looked at their feet. Um, then, you know, calves, back of thighs, doesn't take that long really to check the back of most people's calves or thighs. Then you get to the undies, don't you? And what I say is, look, can I have a one second look at the left cheek and a one second look at the right cheek? Often nothing there. Then you go onto the back, make sure it's all looking normal. Alrighty, now it's about this block here and whatever's here. So let's have a look. No. It's a very dark mole here, but it's very normal. It's got a nice reticular pattern that does not fill me with dread. So let's have a look under here. Give me a moment, it stretches the bra a little bit. Now, you're not, I'm not actually hiding anything from me. Alrighty, so bottom middle thirds, just leaving the top third of the back now. You do grow the occasional mole with a little bit of extra pigment, don't you? Nothing that, again, makes me too nervous. It's all well within the realms of normal. You need to then ask the patient if they've got anything that you haven't looked at that they're worried about. And if the answer is no, then you can be satisfied that you've done your best as a doctor to find their possible skin cancers and then you take some good notes, perhaps you'll take some pictures, perhaps you'll mention some things for the patients to keep an eye on, you'll give them some good education about how to detect their own skin cancers in the future moving forward, and you let them know that if anything's changing, come back and get a check. This dermatoscope I'm using at the moment is an Eluco brand. It's got a few features you probably saw in the video of my skin check that I was doing. As you'd expect, a power button happens to be on the top here, Lots of LEDs, a nice white light. Some dermatoscopes have more of a yellowness to them. Um, this is a quite a nice, neat, clean white light. The, uh, the light works for two hours of operating time anyway, so it's not like I recharge it between sessions. The button on the left is the sort of 
feature you need in dermatoscopes these days, which is a polarising, non-polarising switch. So you can see that the light looks different as you toggle the button on and off. If you're going to get a dermatoscope, get one with one of these. You've got to get a polarising, non-polarising, or you're going to miss some, some lesions, which only have you know, polarising specific white lines, for example. When I looked at Anna's ear spot, I actually took off this faceplate and grabbed this little gadget, this adapter, for just looking in little hollow areas, like, I don't know, conchal bowls, um, belly buttons, for example. I saw a belly button melanoma on a 28-year-old a couple of years ago. That was a bit of a surprise. Um, that's very strong magnet, really easy to, to pull on and off. You don't have to have any attachment on, in fact. You can have that completely removed and just look at it on, say, a raised lesion and then manually focus it that way. Or perhaps if you've got a pink vessel that you want to have a look at, without compressing the vessels, make sure you've got the plate off so that you get the best possible picture. And then when you look through the, the eyepiece, it's quite a wide view on it. So I've been really happy with this and it's done a really good job.